Now we should talk about what I describe as the, the elephant in the room, or perhaps it should be the elephant not in the room, which is the patient. What role should the patient be playing within CME? That's a really good question, and uh, I'm guessing that you asked that because you saw the talk that I gave in Maastricht last year. Uh, the, the patient is the key to CME. I'll tell you why I say that. Most CME in the past has been around uh, a topic, a diagnosis, a treatment, or a condition. It was never about the patient who had the diagnosis, the condition, the disease, the disorder. The evolution has finally been to how do we manage the patient with the problem. Right? So if you put it in that context, as we uh, educators develop content and think about what we have to tell our physician faculty in developing content and delivering it, we need to assess what the needs are at the patient level as well as at the physician level. So it's important to understand barriers that may exist at the patient level, and the only way you can find that out is if you ask them. So they have an important part as we're developing the education. I have used patients as faculty to teach healthcare professionals about the disease or disorder that they're suffering from. This is a little controversial, right? Uh, on both sides, there are healthcare professionals who say, why would you put a patient in front of me? And what could they tell me that I don't already know? It's also a little controversial because if you put the wrong patient up there, they could say something that's either offensive, insulting, or wrong. And then we will lose our learner audience. So it really means educators have to prepare the patient if you happen to use them in that condition. You can also use them as simulated cases within educational content. You know, we spend a lot of time talking about case-based education and, you know, Joe is a 47-year-old man who was hit by a truck and he's, you know, his bionic uh, limbs were replaced. Well, why don't we really bring in someone who had that happen and use it as a real case and use it and dissect it and let people learn from real scenarios. So there's lots of different things we can do with patients in medical education if we're brave enough and we find the right patients. Now when we talk about the patient, outside the US, pharma might push back and say, well there's regulations, we can't promote to patients, we can't get them involved. What would you say to them? Well, uh, let, let's go back. I think the, the concerns are global. They're not US versus rest of world. What I would say though is it's not about the pharma company because if this is CME and it's independent, it's in the hands of the organizers of the CME provider, the accrediting body. So outside the US, we, we often have to go to an accrediting body, whether it's a Royal College here in, in uh, the UK or if it's uh, the EAC CME. So everything has to fit the guidelines that the educators have to follow. It's free from the, 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 the bonds that really hold pharma because pharma's not developing it. If it's done right and it's done independently by an educational provider, then it's up to them to make sure that the appropriate guidelines are followed and it's, it's not pharma involving a patient.